Hello, everybody. So we've already talked a little bit about what the rhetorical situation is. Now I want to take you through some examples so we can really start understanding how this works and kind of being able to read into it a little bit further. So just a moment. All right, so as a quick recap, let's go over the rhetorical situation again. For this, I've come up with the acronym Go Camp. G for genre, O for occasion, C for context, A for audience, M for purpose, and P, M for medium, and P for purpose. And if you want to memorize it that way, that is totally cool. You can also just think of your question words, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Okay, so first we're going to think about the who. Who is your audience? Who is going to be reading this piece? What do they know? What do they believe, etc.? How do their prior knowledge, values, and beliefs influence the production and reception of this text? Okay, so we're thinking about who is reading it, what they know, what they believe, etc. Also, what type of genre is this? And how do the conventions, these basic features, influence the production and reception of the text? So we talked about a tweet versus a resume versus an academic essay, and all those play into what your reader expects and also how you should go about producing that, how you kind of already have the bones of what you are going to write when you want to write a tweet, for example, that you have an idea of the bones and the structure of what you will do. So next is the when, at what time or for what occasion is the text being produced? Is it timely? Is it, does it make sense historically for the text to be produced and published at this time? Next is where in the social cultural context will the communication take place? And how does that situation, how does the context influence the production and reception of the text? Next is how in what medium. So this is thinking about your media, if it's a song or a television ad or a billboard, how do these things change how the message is received and how you decide to put it forward? And lastly, why are you communicating? And I think this is something that is super important really for just about anything, is what is your main goal when you're writing? And what is the author's goal when they're writing? So what what is driving the author's choices and affecting the, the audience's perception of the text? Okay, so now that we've done a recap, let's look at some examples. Now, I decided to choose advertisements just because these work really well to kind of analyze and understand. So the first, we have this advertisement. It has an image of a car, some snow, um, a person running, and at the top says, only Boston makes you train with three feet. And then nobody runs like New Balance Boston. Okay, and with the hashtag only Boston. Okay, so let's think about this. Who is the audience for this piece? Would it be anybody? Would it be people in China? Would it be um, people in the United States? Now I'm going to narrow this down and say, it is people in Boston specifically. But it goes even further than that because not everybody in Boston is being targeted by this advertisement. This advertisement is going for people who train, who run, and are looking for new tennis shoes. Um, and who might like New Balance shoes or maybe are like a different brand and maybe they should switch over. And specifically even, not even people who just like to train and people who run, but people who are really into it because they're running when there's three feet of snow on the ground. Okay, so the next is the genre. So this is an advertisement as we talked about before. And this is a very good example of an advertisement because there is so much white space on the page. And in this case, the space isn't white, but notice this area up here above only Boston on around the sides that is just empty and blank. And it really makes the words pop out, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words that take up almost half of the ad. So they want you to be able to see those words quickly and read it very quickly and easily. And then having like kind of the name of the brand down here, New Balance, you can definitely see these New Balance shoes 
so with an advertisement, especially this makes me think of an ad that would be in a magazine that you're flipping through and there's a picture and some words and at the bottom there's usually kind of the name of the brand. So this fits very well. I would not expect an advertisement to look like an essay where every single line every, there is really no white space except the spaces in between words. Um, and I wouldn't, I would definitely expect an advertisement to have images. I mean, not always, but a lot of the time, yes. Okay, so this really fits into those genre conventions. So next is when. Um, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this advertisement was posted in the winter when there is snow on the ground, because it's during that time when people are really feeling like, oof, like it is so hard to keep up like my training. I feel so proud of myself for pushing through even when my lungs hurt. Whereas like if it were in the summer, I'd be like, huh, that's, yeah, that's true. We, we train in the winter. But in the summer, I'd more expect something summerly. Okay. So next we're thinking about where, and this kind of fits into the audience, um, but the audience, so if you had this in a magazine, for example, or you had it on the internet where anybody could read it, it could be a Bostonian who lives anywhere and they just feel cool <laughs> because they were or are a runner in Boston. Now, specifically where, you might be thinking about where is this advertisement placed? And if we're thinking about specific places, you might see this plastered in the T or down um, Mass Ave. I'm sorry, I'm like my brain just blanked on the major streets. Um, so you might see this plastered on a building or in the T or somewhere else that, is in Boston so that every Bostonian walking by it is going to read it and see it. Whereas like, I definitely wouldn't expect that to see that in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We'd be like, why are you advertising to Bostonians in Ann Arbor? Like, no, don't do that. Okay, we have our own specific advertising and I wanted to share some of those with you, but decided not to for the sake of time. Um, that they basically have inside jokes for people who live in, Ar in Ann Arbor. So, and it's a local bank has a lot of great local jokes um, for Ann Arbor people. Okay, so that's how we're thinking about the where. It's probably going to be in Boston somewhere. Um, how? So obviously I can't tell from this advertisement. I just found it on the internet. Um, but as I said before, I can imagine seeing this in a magazine. I can imagine seeing it in the tea. I can imagine it being like at a bus stop, different places, maybe even a website advertisement. So how might these things differ? So if I were going to see it on a website, for example, maybe on the Boston Globe, I would expect to be able to click it and go to the New Balance website. Whereas obviously if this were on the tea or at a bus stop, I definitely wouldn't be, expect to be able to walk up and like, beep, 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 let me get some shoes, okay? That would be silly. Um, so that kind of changes what people expect out of the advertisement. Obviously, like if it were on a website and it, if I clicked it and nothing happened, I would be frustrated because that's not what I expect out of that medium. Okay, so our last thing is why is they, are they communicating? And for New Balance, this is pretty easy. They want you to buy their shoes, plain and simple. Okay, so now let's look at some political ads. Um, it's actually, I had a really hard time trying to find political ads for this campaign season, which is really weird considering we're in the heat of it. But I found this from previously. So it's a nice picture of Trump, a black background says Trump fooled us once, will he scam Florida again? And you kind of notice this big scam so, and big Trump, and even if you were to quickly look, the two big words you're going to see are Trump scam. So that kind of gives you an idea already that this is a anti-Trump advertisement. Okay, but as we said before, like this really fits into the genre. I know I'm jumping ahead, but this, you can see that image text proportion. I mean, there's even fewer words on the New Balance ad, but if you look, it has that 
image word and this has the necessary like who paid for it okay so that's really fitting into the genre as you can see so thinking about audience so i'm guessing this advertisement is not geared toward people who believe in trump who support trump want him to be president because it's a it's a negative advertisement but beyond that I am specifically looking at Florida here. So if this were an advertisement in Michigan or Massachusetts or California, I would be kind of like, I might be interested in the fact that he scammed Florida, but it's not that big of a deal to me. Whereas my family who lives in Florida would probably be a lot more interested because they're like, oh, how did he scam me? Like me personally, how am I affected? And be more likely to follow the link. Okay, so we're thinking wide audience and try to narrow it down as little as possible. I guess we can also go to age groups of people 18 over, people who want to vote, um, and maybe not even people who don't support Trump, but maybe who are kind of wiggly in the middle there. Okay, um, so when is this being published? Probably before last election season, so probably in 2016 or if I don't know, like I got this probably a year ago. So probably it would be kind of weird for this to come out in say like 2014 or 2018 when there wasn't really any political cloud. There's nothing political really going on. And by the time an election season comes around, it doesn't really matter. Like <laughs> everybody's forgotten about this. Just we've forgotten about so many things that happened two, three years ago. Okay, so where is this? Um, so this is happening in the United States. We understand the general um, political scandal and everything that happens here. Whereas in other countries, if something like this came out where they're like bashing somebody, this can also go into the when of like historically in the United States, like bashing your opponent. Um, would be unheard of and very like it might make people like Trump more because then he's seen as a victim of bullying so that's sort of like a cultural context to think of of like what are people expecting from a political grounds are they expecting chivalry are they expecting professionalism or do they kind of expect this like all-out brawling that we get in the United States okay so how what medium is this in um I can see this being at the end of a television commercial where they like go through and they talk a little bit about how Trump scammed Florida and then this being the image right at the end. I can see this being um, posted somewhere again, like at a bus stop. Um, obviously, again, I don't know where this was orig originally done, but you can think like, where would you expect to see this and where would you not expect to see it? And I think a lot of times that where would you not or who would you not share this with is really great for thinking of like how do you understand a genre and how do you understand a rhetorical situation and thinking about the the other side <laughs> okay um, and then why are they communicating this I guess is to get people to not like Trump and to go to their website trumpquestions.com okay so our next advertisement is a pro-Trump <laughs> advertisement. Figured it would be good to balance things out a little. Okay, so here, this is sponsored by Black Voices for Trump, and it has Trump kind of clapping at the top and the Make America Great Again sign saying, Black Voices are thriving in the Trump economy, best economy in memory. And it has a bunch of check marks for like things that Trump has done for the black community. And then um, two black people holding Trump signs with the text woke. So this, I, there's so much to analyze in this. Let me skip one. There we go. Um, so who is the audience for this? And I think there's a number of audiences. So first of all, obviously we get down to the United States, we get down to um, people of voting age, but what are the beliefs? So I think this, this, this one is really interesting to me because 
especially with the words woke, um, we're kind of getting into a younger demographic. So like my age, even younger than my age, these young voters um, that are more likely to use the term woke. Um, we're also looking at people of color in generally, in general, um, and specifically black people. We are also looking at people who are allies to black people and who care about black lives and might be protesting Black Lives Matter to say like, hey, Trump is an ally to black people. Trump is an ally to people of color, where he's traditionally kind of been put as against <laughs> um, people who are not white. So this is really arguing like, no, black people love Trump and look at all the things that he has done for black people. So trying to pull in voters who are younger, who believe that Black Lives Matter, who may be Black or Black allies, etc. Okay, and I love the rhetorical decision to make sure that you have two Black people holding signs for Trump. Um, lots of information here. Okay, so what genre? So this, again, is a political advertisement specifically and why does this keep changing? <laughs> okay, I think I keep hitting my touchpad and I keep accidentally changing it. I'm just very touchy touchy. Just not people. Okay, um, so what genre? Is it the basic conventions? So we kind of talked a little bit about advertisements already. You have a lot of images, a lot of a lot more white space. Obviously, this has less white space than our other advertisements, um, but kind of in line with a political campaign that there is information about getting more involved in the campaign, um, learning more information about, and right in front telling you, here's what this candidate has done already. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about is when. And kind of again with the other political campaign that this would be most relevant in the year 2020, but not after November 3rd. So if this ad went out on November 10th, we'd all kind of be like, cool, we already voted. What do you want us to do with this information? Okay, or if it came out, I guess like in the, if, if Trump was not doing well as president or if any president wasn't doing well as president to just like push out information to say like, look at all the good things I'm doing. Um, whereas like if Joe Biden came out with something in 2015 to say like, here's my campaign, that would be really confusing because you're like, you're not running for president and it's years, it's a while away from a presidential, like presidential campaign. So what are you doing? Okay. So really we're just looking at the year, maybe even into 2019 to say, especially something like this, that's for an incumbent. Um, to be able to say like, here's everything I've done, here's why you should keep me in office. Okay, next thing is where, and we kind of talked a little bit about this already, um, that this is happening in the United States, this is what we expect out of a political campaign, um, and specifically if we're thinking about um, toward certain communities of what do these communities care about? Um, and that kind of goes with audience a lot. Some of these things are kind of interchangeable when you start thinking about it, but how, like how does the context, how does the belief systems impact how this is received? Um, next is how and in what medium. So again, we're talking about if this is an advertisement on a website, if this is a magazine, if this is whatever else. Again, I don't know exactly what this is, but you can think about like, where would this make sense and where would it not make sense? And lastly, why are we communicating this message? And for this, it's to be able to say overall that people should vote for President Trump, that especially this marginalized group that have traditionally, I don't, I don't wanna say traditionally, that media and everybody else has kind of painted that Trump is anti-Black, to be able to say like, no, here's all the things that Trump is doing for the black community. Um, and we're a bunch of black people who are voting for Trump, so you should vote for Trump too. Um, to kind of pull in those specific audiences and 
to prove um, that he's doing well as president. Okay, so I, we just wanted to do a quick wrap up. Thank you for listening to me. Um, so in all, we're looking at our audience, genre, occasion, context, medium, and purpose. So our who, what, where, when, why, and how. And I hope this helps you as you continue looking at pieces of writing in this class into the future to think about what is being said, who is the author, what purpose are they trying to convey, and even yourself to think about whenever you're writing something to be able to jump off the bat and start thinking about why you're writing something and who you're writing to, and even these genre conventions about what is expected of you. Okay, thank you so much for listening. I hope to hear from you soon. Okay, bye.